This playthrough is rated T for Teen. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Voldemort back here with another episode of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. In the previous episode, we continued to explore Terrace to get more information on uh, on about Bastil and Undercity. We also found a droid companion who unfortunately blew up in the face of our own, uh, our own hubris, I guess it was. But anyway... We found ourselves finally to the Undercity, but we're stopped by a Sith Guard who won't let us in for any reason. Unless we're similar to him, because only a Sith can get past a Sith, and we've gotten a way to get past that Sith. Let's equip the outfit, the Sith armor. That'll, uh, it's not as good as our out- oops, sorry. Uh, it's not as good as our outfit, but we only needed to get through the door. And for a short period of time, I'm going to give myself just one weapon for a bit. Uh, at least until I gain one more level when I get the uh, two weapon fighting. Uh, boosted up a bit because I want to I want to be more effective at hitting at least for a while so I'll still do a bit of damage but uh, I want to be able to actually hit something for a bit so anyway with the Sith armor equipped let's talk to our friend does Karth need a piece of armor apparently not because watch another patrol heading down to the lower city eh? well, good luck I've heard it's pretty rough down there there's a big swoop gang war going on you know you better watch yourself those gangs will take a shot at anyone even us it's too bad we don't have the manpower just to sweep those slums clean. Oh, yeah! Wink, wink. We are patrol. Let's go inside. He fell for it, Karth. What a moron. Uh, dude, he's like right there. Oh, don't worry. PCs can't, NPCs can't hear us after we've uh, bypassed them, so it's okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> anyway, yep, that's how we get down to the ground. We just wear their outfit. You, no, no checking of IDs, no, you know, patting us down, no verifying our, like, code number, or whatever it is. Nope, just wear a suit of armor that looks just like them, and you're good to go. All right, so now that we're underground, we don't need our suit anymore, so let's uh, unequip the combat armor. However, just to give him just a bit more AC, I'm going to put Karth in the armor yes. for a bit until, until, uh, after a short while. Bex are nothing but bent the father. The Volkars are strongest. We'll teach you who's the strongest. Kipuna, sit up. Welcome here. It's like the game expected me to wear the uh, Sith armor after that, but yeah, gang wars are happening, and man, those cutscenes. Woo! Alright, so we need to, uh, uh, I guess I just need to have, uh, Karth ain't even there yet, so, whoops. What? Sorry, I kind of messed up there, so... Oh. Well, luckily these guys are easy enough. What? I took a bit of damage, but nothing too bad. Sorry, I kind of screwed up during that fight because I... I uh, was I was messing up and couldn't fight Karth and all that other... or switch my own dude. It's been a while since I played, so I took a, a short break. So anyway, let's rob these guys. Yes. I'm a, uh... Okay, now that we're done with that, let's put some clothes back on. Because, uh, we're not going to have these for very long, sadly enough. Sure. Okay, well, like, that's a shock. Like, we'd be able to just go through the rest of the game with the, uh... Um... Uh... Sith armor on. So now that we're officially in the other city... Let me go ahead, since I survived that combat... Funny enough, when I first played this game, I would actually die to that encounter when the three guys attacked me. Yeah, <laughs> weird, huh? It was so easy. We just, like, outright destroyed him. But, well, it was before I really figured out how to, like, figure out stats and, and you know, and affect uh, numbers and stuff like that. So, anyway, let's go into this cantina here in the Undercity. F see if we can find out uh, more about those gangs and see where maybe their hideout is. or Because uh... apparently they, they might know where those pods are. But uh, apparently this gang war is making it harder to uh, get a good conversation with them. 
Oh wait, no, we're not at the canteen yet. This is the uh, this is the apartments. Whoops, sorry. The canteen is like right next door to this place. Uh, let's check the apartments first then. Yeah, that's it. That's what I was originally gonna say. Woohoo! All right, anyway, let's switch to cars so we can uh, get in there. On it. Got it. Or on it. Hey, you can't come in here. This is a private apartment. Uh, I'm here to rob this place. Just to shut up. Don't get upset. I'll go now. What are you doing here? This place looks abandoned. None of your business. Just turn around and go back the way you came if you know it's good for you. So are you in some sort of trouble? Do you want to talk about it? I'm here to rob this place. I don't like your attitude. Okay. Let's see if we can persuade him. Uh, I, I guess I could tell you. you probably find out on your own eventually. Zax is giving his bounties away like candy, or so I hear. My name's Matrix. I used to work for the exchange, but all the violence and killing started to get to me. I knew what I was doing was wrong, so I turned to turn state's evidence. My testimony helped me put some of the biggest criminals and terrorists away for life, but Davik didn't like seeing his friends go down, so now he's got a bounty on my head. Uh, yeah, see, like... Being good means you lose out on a lot of credits for doing these uh, bounties. Although technically, if you wanted to like do these officially, you'd want to go underground, go to the cantina where the under city cantina where they give out the missions, take the bounties, and then fix them to do whatever you want. But I kind of was doing it out of order, so yeah, that that happened to me first time I played too. I just couldn't help myself to explore every single room. Uh, see, so you can. Just Opt out if you don't want to mess with that, or maybe there's someone who could help you out this mess. I don't think there's much anyone could do, and I'm getting sick of running. I decided to take my make my stand right here. Uh, maybe you could pay David a golf. Maybe you could fake your own death. Uh, maybe you could turn the tables. You know how David Getting inside David's base is nearly impossible. Even if I got rid of him, the exchange would just appoint someone else to his place. I'd have a price on my head. Well, if that's uh, if that's the case, why don't you have your death faked? I've never really thought of that. I can't. I came. I even came up with a plan of how to do it, but I can't pull it off while I'm holed up in here. Uh, tell me your plan. Maybe I could help you out. The trick is getting Davik to buy it when there's no body found to see. If it looks like I died in a massive explosion, he won't be suspicious when my corpse never turns up. By the way, I think that's Steve Bloom voicing the alien gibberish, by the way. If I had an accomplice go back and tell Davik that they were the one who set off the explosion to eliminate, I think I'd be home free. I have some demolitions experience from my own days in the exchange, so I can set it off, but I need to get in my hands on perm... Perm Macriot, Permacriot, Permacret, Permacret, Detonator. Now, because I didn't buy it, but remember that one lady uh, in Upper Terrace near the Upper Cantina? She had an item in her inventory for 50 credits, uh, the Detonator. That's where you get it. And uh, Obviously, if you didn't know anything about that, there'd be no reason for you to buy it. Well, now there's a reason to buy it. I could get you one. They don't usually sell them in stores here in the lower city, but that city might carry them. You might want to look there first. All right, so we uh, obviously I didn't buy him, so I'll have to go go do that off screen. Uh, not right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing the story. So maybe when I split the episode up, I'll uh, I'll do it. But yeah, all we have to do is go back into the upper city, come back to him, fake fake his death, and uh, we'll. Uh, oh, there's Black Volker is waiting around. So uh, this is a good chance of where they don't automatically attack you. You could either sneak up on him, or or wait. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, what? Um, see if I can highlight him as cards and just have him attack him. Yeah, I could probably throw a grenade at him. Look how good Karth is. Now, there's a difference between Karth being a really good like fighter and a good character. Uh, Karth as a character is probably one of the most boring characters in the game, sadly enough. It's because he's lawful good. I mean, yeah, Star Wars doesn't have an alignment system, but that's pretty much what Karth, it, Karth is, so it uh, um, it kind of makes him one of the more uh, boring characters to uh, deal with. I'm going to save again just because I survived a, uh, uh, a persuasion option. But in combat, he is, he is basically... If you build him up correctly, he's good till the end game. Seriously, like, you could leave Karth in your game for the rest of it and you're good you're 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 apples and oranges you know what i mean oh interesting what's this huh well looks like we have ourselves an interesting quandary let's just open that up githos sorry 
Sorry I couldn't be there with you, but here's the package I promised. Remember, activate the holographic security system in the proper order to open it. Oh, boom! Just activate the holograms in the same order that they joined the band. Since you're the Twisted Raycor's trio manager, you should be able to figure out the code. I still think this is a mistake. Davik won't be happy if Ashana can't fill in for her sister. And you don't want to get Davik mad or you might never come to that estate again. Anyway, good luck, and if this works... Think about what a great chapter it'll make in that biography of that the band you've been working on. All right, so this is a puzzle. Now, we can just straight up open it, but we lose the contents inside. It might die because of our wounds that we got. So, uh, I forgot how you're supposed to figure that out. I think we just check them, and then it tells us a little story about the characters. Please don't throw the crown in the proper order to further tense on the right entries. We'll resolve detonating. Okay. Uh, let's see, is it... Okay, there it is, the desk. Whoops. No, don't don't activate that. Okay. There we go. We get the Twisted Ranker item. Uh, basically, this will allow us to figure out... Let's see. I think... Where is that? It might be on quest inventory items. Like I said, it's been a while since I've uh, played this game, so... Uh, certain things are, uh, um, imme uh, not immediately, uh, let's see, where is it? Ah, there it is, quest items. Took me a second. Alright, Guts and Glory, a chronicle of the amazing story of the Twisted Ranker Trio by Gith Githos Uxaris, a work in progress. The origins of what would, the origins of what would eventually become the most famous band in the galaxy are surprisingly humble. The brains behind the group, manager... Githos Uxaris founded the trio to earn a date with a young singer named Elinda. The ploy worked, and Elinda became the first member to join a band. Now remember that first, Elinda. Uh, Githos scrambled to find musicians to back her up and signed a bith named Uja. So, Elinda, Uja. Soon after that, he signed Uja's brother, Uji, to complete the trio. So, Elinda, Uja, Uji. Got it? All right. The band struggled at first. Elinda was a fantastic singer, but Uja wasn't much of a musician. When Elinda threatened to quit, get those fired Uja and sign another bit named Lupa. So it goes, uh, Elinda, Uja, Uji, Lupa. Of course, that didn't go over well with Uja's brother, and Uji quit. Fortunately, Lupa knew another musician named Fofodo, who joined to replace Uji. Okay, so remember, folks. Elinda, Uja, Uji, Lupa and uh, um, photo, okay? Led by Linda's singing, the second incarnation of the Twisted Raycor trio became quite popular on their home world of Terrace, eventually attracting the attention of local legitimate businessman, Davik King. Yeah, right. Davik asked Githos to bring his group in for a command performance. Gith Gilthos agreed, re realizing this could be the band's big break. Unfortunately, Linda had heard certain unsubstantial rumors about Devic King and his connections to the exchange. Fearing for her life, she refused to go to the state to perform. Many felt that without Linda singing, the band would crumble. But Gilthos came up with a brilliant plan to save the group by hiring Linda's sister, Ashana, as the new group leader group on the eve of their scheduled appearance on Devic's estate. Gilthus knew he was taking a risk. If Ashana could perform at Alinda's risk, Davik's infamous temper could have dire consequences for the entire band. However, if Ashana could match her sister's performance, then Davik would likely to sign the band to a big-time touring contract. It was a risk, but the Twisted Raker trio was founded on Glitz and Glory. There are no further entries. Yeah, they didn't survive. All right, so yes, we've got our... Okay, so we need to go with... I don't know if the group leader counts first. Okay, so that's not the case. All right, so if we want to open this now, I forgot if it's... Do you go from the crate? Okay, we go from this first. Okay, so Alinda. Uh -huh. so from... what? what? Oops, sorry, I have to highlight it. Sure. Okay. Sorry, the, like I said, the target is a bit weird in this game. Okay, Alinda. Uja. Uji. There we go. And then uh, Lupa. And then Photo. 
and then a Shawnee. Boom. Got it. Yeah, not too hard. If you just pay attention, really, it's not that difficult. Uh, they all look the same, but okay. Let's see. Wait, wait, wait four, uh, four bis, bith and uh, two uh, humans. Anyway, we get armor for that. Nice. I think it's better than the armor I'm currently wearing, and I can give the combat suit to uh, Karth. Yeah, uh, not a whole lot better, but still better than what I was wearing, so... What was it again? I was six, 17, so it gave me one more. Hey, one more defense, man. Can't complain. All right, and then we give Karth the new suit that that will see before. When he had clothes, it was just his dex, which is 13. So we give that. Makes it 17. Nice. So now, although Karth isn't supposed sure. to be in the front, but it, uh, you know, it'll it'll help him out for sure. So, you know, so. Although, really, it's me that's getting hit, and I should probably heal pretty soon. Otherwise, I will get, uh, reamed by the, uh, by a bad fight at some point. But we're good for now, so let's keep going. Yeah, too bad those guys didn't drop anything. Oh well. Yeah, nice little puzzle. There are a couple of those in the game. Not too difficult for the most part. Alright, let's have Karth. Uh, oh, no, that wasn't yes. security, huh? For some reason I thought it was security. What the? Well, gotta go in. What? Oh, I died. Whoops. All right, well, uh, let's do that again, since now I, I forgot if that was supposed to be a tough fight or not. Let's do that again and actually have myself be healed this time. By the way, this that guy has a shield on him, so Karth's blasters are going to just uh, uh, go through his... Uh, uh, it's just going to slowly whittle, be whittled down by a shield, so I want to heal this time. Now, I could go back to the, the like, health shop uh, off-screen and heal myself. Save me a... Meta, uh, save me a... Um, a uh, medipack, but I've got plenty, and we're gonna get a lot throughout the game, so I'm not that. I mean, if I was if I was playing a harder difficulty, then yeah, I would easily switch to a uh, uh, difficult. Uh... Okay, so we want to, we basically want to distract him, and then we want to have Karth basically just. Yes. There we go, see? There we go. Yeah, he did quite a bit of damage, but not too difficult. I mean, yeah, I failed the first time, but that's just because I didn't heal myself like an idiot, so... It's really not that bad. Oh, we get an energy shield from that guy. Nice. Which we'll want to equip that to me. That'll help us during the, um... Um... We can use that during the, uh, duelist tournaments. So that'll help us out there. See, we even get more med packs, so it's not that big a deal. Open, please. Thank you. Get more adrenaline strength, antidote kit. We don't... We won't need antidotes for quite a bit. Um, I think we have to get to the undercity sewers. Yeah, there's sewers in this game. Are you surprised? Alright, let's save it again. Like I said, I pretty much... You're pretty much going to do this. You should do this even on the easy mode. Just, you know, save scumming it so you've, uh, so you're, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, energy shields will appear on your items menu. But like I said, save that for either big groups or the dueling tournaments, but you have to fight, like, Twitch or something like that. Okay, let's heal ourselves and just to make sure. Yep, more black Volcars, so. I don't think there's any, uh, thing, but, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and have, uh, Ready? Okay. Yes, what's in Whoops. Your... Not Dirty Kovac, Karth! What's wrong with you? Okay. Oh, let's, uh... Haha! Oh, I finally gained a level. Nice. Thank you. And I did get hurt this time. Nice. Oops. Stop. Okay. I don't know why it keeps... Yeah, the game's a little glitchy, even after all these years. I mean, not. it's not that bad. It, it's minor at best. But yeah, we'll level up here in a second. Nice. More. See, like I said, we get plenty of med packs, so don't worry too much about. It. Okay. Yeah, I hate that. I hate the fact that the game still highlights stuff even if you've clearly grabbed it. So, okay. Before we continue on, let's uh, save it once more. Like I said, I'm, you should do this after every major fight. 
Uh, it's like if you were playing Baldur's Gate, if any of you are familiar with that, you'd usually save it after every major area, or if you saw, um, like if you fought combat or something like that, you'd still want to do that anyway. All right, let's go to level four. Uh, we want to level up our strength, because this is, this is the type of build we're going to go with. So basically, the rest of the game, I'm going to pretty much level up strength <laughs> the most, so, because I've got... Dex would be the next if you didn't want to, if you didn't care about strength. Like I want to at least get strength to eighteen, then I might consider dexterity afterwards because, well, at later in the game it will explain why. But for now, I want to boost up strength. Unfortunately, we don't get a feat that's next level, but we don't. We want to put that feat in when we get the chance. All right, like before, since we don't have persuade, I want to go uh, treat injury, repair, and computer skill. At some point, I am going to stop putting points in computer skill and just save it all for persuade. And we don't need repair to be super high either. Uh, I think... I'm trying to remember. I think it's either 12 or 15 as I repair needs to go. And with boosts and stuff like that, we can stop at a certain point. Like I said, repair is not even necessary for this build. I'm just doing it because there's a certain character I want to use this for. So we... Yeah, veterans probably already know what that is. But yeah, that's pretty much it, unfortunately. Uh, but we get Uncanny Dodge and Implant Level 2, so now we can get in, uh, higher level implants because we are being a scout. So that saves us uh, having to buy, use the feet for implants if you weren't playing a scout. Yeah. Uncanny Dodge, that is, let me show you, Let's see if I can pop it up here. Uh, look, look, feats, okay. Uncanny Dodge is unique to the scout. Uncanny Dodge. A character with Uncanny Dodge retains the dexterity bonus to defense even when surprised by camouflage opponents and also gains a plus two saves versus grenades. So if, like, someone came out from a stealth generator and attacked me, I wouldn't lose my dex uh, AC. So I'd still... Like, if you're attacked unawares, you're basically considered flat-footed in D&D, &D, which means you don't get your dex bonus. So my plus two dex because of the... Or if you're just playing a heavy dex build. Like, if you were 18, you'd lose your four dex... AC against it, which sucks. But as a scout, I can't. Basically, I can't be surprised, uh, and I'm I'm good at dodging grenades. So there you go. Another benefit for for uh, playing a scout. The sentry droid has fallen into disrepair. Oh, I forgot about this function feature in this area. You can actually have this repair droid go out and go uh uh, uh kill uh um uh, kill those people. Um, I don't actually think I need to repair it even anymore. You can only do this once, by the way. As soon as you back out of him, he's pretty much dead for if you do, uh, uh, patrol mode. Um, yeah, I, th I don't think I can... Since I've killed... I think I've killed everyone in this area, haven't I? He basically is supposed to help you, uh, finish... Yeah, see, there's only one room, one room left. Actually, there might be someone in there. Oh, there's a black Volcar, so never mind. Wait, where'd he come from? Huh. Okay. Can I still talk to this guy or did I? Yeah, I'll make a... I'll put him in patrol. Oh no, I only got seven. Hmm. Because I'm not going to be using a repair a lot on other things other than... Uh... Let's do weaponry. That'll be fine. I think I should be good with that. So, and then that way when he comes by... Oh, nope. Okay, let's have... Karth uh -huh. deal with that. Is the robot close enough for a... Uh... Nah, I guess the robot's not close enough. But, well, there goes a waste of parts. <laughs> Sure. If you really want him to be helpful, you uh, you set the uh, robot to uh, patrol, and uh, and like do com you at least want his weapons to be activated and set on patrol is pretty much what you want for that. So, okay, we got a guy in here, and like before we want Ready. to blast him. <laughs> pretty easy. Like I said. Uh, maybe on the harder difficulties, or if you have really high repair, it would be effective to hit the droid. It looked like he was helping, although unless you repair his uh, targeting system, he's going to miss a good deal of the time, too. So, Oh, well. Like I said, I don't use parts for a lot of stuff anyway in this game, or at least not with this build, so it's not too not too important. All right, let's uh, get out of the uh, apartments here. 
we're taking care of everything. We'll be back here later just to give that uh, detonator to uh, the dude. So don't worry about that. And good thing it auto saves after every little area here. Just takes forever to load though. That's the only problem. But it is an Xbox game. We have to we have to accept the fact that you know this is before the day where we have high high end PCs that can load these things that can load Skyrim within a couple of minutes. You know so. Anyway, we want we don't want to go that way yet. We at least want to. Uh, I remember correctly, the cantina is not supposed to be too far away from. Me. Whoa, there's a little. I think it must be. It's got to be up ahead, if I remember correctly. Okay, let me go and save it one more time since we've had a combat. And yeah, I know I auto saved it, but I, I'm I'm just paranoid about that type of stuff. Hell, it only takes a few seconds anyway, so. Javar's Cantina. This will we'll get some good information in here. I think up ahead is the uh, Swoop Gang's uh, place, but let's try out the Cantina. Okay. Didn't know if I had to. Uh, didn't know if I had to pay or anything like that. You know, some some bars are like that, man. You never know. Uh oh. Did the game freeze on me? Hopefully it didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, as old as the game as it is, and this game works for the most part, but every once in a while there'll be minor glitches, and the, my disc might not be uh, working perfectly because it's been a while, but it's been a while since. If I remember correctly, this has some new missions. There's the a couple of Pazak players you can play in here, and the Bounty Hunter missions you can do as well. But anyway, let's talk to people, see if we can learn some more info. Hi there, not too many people come in here to speak to me anymore. Most prefer the fancy surroundings of the upper city cantina. But nobody up there carries the kind of Pazak cards I sell. Are you in purchasing some individual cards to bolt you up Pazak deck? What are you talking about? I'm talking about Pazak, you know, son? You know? High stakes gambling. Each player brings their own deck to Pazak match. And the better the cards are, the better your chances of winning. My name is Uria. Everyone knows I'm the man to see if you want to add some cards to your Pazak deck. My price is quite reasonable. So what do you say? Are you interested in buying some of my Pazak cards to augment your deck? Well, ask some questions. If you want information, you can speak to Zax in the bounty office. He's Davik's unofficial earpiece, but I'll try to answer your questions best I can. Tell me about Davik. I'm not stupid enough to stop bad amount of the Davik King in this place. No, Zax's so nearby. Go to the bounty office and talk to him if you want to scoop on Davik. How about some information on the lower city? Don't know why I can really tell you. There's a gang war between the Hidden Becks and Black Coal Cars, but everyone knows about that. How about the Hidden Becks? Becks are run by a name gang, gang and Thek. They used to run things here in the lower city. Life wasn't too bad. Now the Bull Cars are trying to move in. I mean, well, Black. I know it's a little disjointing when I click out a conversation like that, but uh, the, the alien species don't say anything. It's just, just them saying they're gibberish, so... Tell me about the Black Bull Cars. Bull Cars are led by Bredrick. He's tough and ruthless, maybe a little sane. He's also determined to take control of the entire Lower City away from the Hidden Becks. When the Hidden Becks ran things, people could walk the Lower City streets in safety. Now the Black Bull Cars attack people on sight. Watch out for them. Do you know anything about those Republic escape pods that crashed down in the city? Not the city. You don't want to go down there. The place is crawling with that ghouls. Do yourself a favor and forget about those escape pods. Besides, there's probably nothing left of those pods anyway. The Bex or the Black Volcars would have stripped anything value from them within hours of the crash. Hmm. Interesting. Makes me wonder. Well, let's see what you have for sale. I haven't been able to restock my inventory since the Sith quarantine started, but I've got pretty good prices. And here's a, a way to for you to augment your deck. Now, technically, you could... Um, play the whole game with your current deck it just gets a little bit more difficult near the end game but you can beat the deck as uh you can beat the uh, you can beat all pizzak players through save scumming and doing that deck so if you're trying to uh, if you're playing basically playing light side or you're trying to squander every single credit you get you might avoid buying um pizzak cards just in general uh some of the most uh, effective pizzak cards are these these minus and plus these are technically cheating cards, but it doesn't affect the game at all. In terms of, you don't get caught and you don't get in trouble. It just goes, you fail or you lose or whatever, but you don't... But there's no, like, consequences for buying these type of cards. Basically, in the middle of the game, these specific type of cards, you can switch to either be plus or minus. So they basically cover double duty 
for uh, for like instead of buying like a ton of plus and minus cards separately, you could buy one of these and that cover a bunch of them. So having a bunch of these in your deck is really effective for winning quicker without having to save scum. We might buy some of these layers, but for now we'll leave them best well until we leave Terrace, which we're gonna leave Terrace. That's not a surprise. Uh, that's not a spoiler really. Uh, we can always come back and buy stuff from him. Gelrude, I think, is also a Pizak player. My name is Gelrude. Are you a Pizak player by chance? It's so hard for me to find a match now that I've been banned from the Upper City Cantina. Oh, why were you banned? A simple misunderstanding. Some of the other Pizak players don't understand the finer points of the game. So what if I win 15 matches in a row? That doesn't mean I cheat. There's no justice. My lucky Pizak deck was confiscated and I was banned from the Upper Cantina. Since then, I've been desperate to find a match. Oh, well. Maybe we'll play later. I want to ask you some questions. If you want to ask questions, go talk to Zax in the bounty office. He knows everything that's happening on Taurus. I'm just here to play for Zach. So do you want to play or not? I'll play later. See you if later. you're ever looking for a match and you get tired of posturing in the upper cantina, just come down here and find me. I'll play you anytime. All right. Well, now that we've got more options for earning money from Pazak. Ooh, we got a cutscene here. Go away. Hey, you talk, don't talk like that. You just want to say hi. Big bad baddie hunter, Kayla Nord. Nah, this can't be Kayla Nord. He's supposed to be tough. This guy's nothing but a runt. One. What? What do you mean? You be funny, tough guy? Who knows? You know who we are, Kale. We're members of the Black Volcar gang. You don't want to be getting funny with us or tough guy. Me no understand. One, two? Why he count? He tried to count how many of us is against him? It's three against one, Kalo. What do you think those odds? Well, you have something more to say? Three. What do you mean? What the? Oh, damn, dude. He killed them with the stun. Uh, he stunned them and then shot them all dead. Hey, that was pretty badass, no man. Man, but I want to talk to you. I saw you mop off the floor with those black Volkars. Nice work. One. You know, I'm not looking. <laughs> I'm not looking for a fight. I just want to talk to you. Two. Oh, come on, man. Don't be. Don't be like that. I'm just trying to be friendly. Don't you want to be friendly? Three. What the? He's attacking me. Oh man. Well, this. I'm gonna take you down a peg, Kalo Norn. This is gonna be easy peasy, Gary Teasy. What the? No. T oh. Uh. Oh. Wow. Yep, that's right. If you do <laughs> if you mess with Kalo Norn and talk to him until he says three, he kills your party. You can't hurt him. He's a he's basically invincible. You might be able to barely hurt him, but he pretty much kills you so <laughs> so on the next episode of star wars knights of the old republic perhaps we won't talk to, we'll leave kayla nord alone and continue exploring the cantina and see if we can find out more about the uh, the uh, swoop gangs and see if we can find out basila's location thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and may the force be with you folks